classes are made up of objects or instances, individual things which populate the category a class represents. Class diagrams define classes and show how they relate to each other. Object diagrams let you show real-world examples of objects and their relationships. In a live application, after all, it's instances of a class that are used to execute the business logic, not the classes themselves. Object diagrams, which are also called instance diagrams, tend to be much simpler than class diagrams. They're useful for showing how objects work in a particular scenario. In a later movie, we'll see how to move from a class diagram to an object diagram. Here, we'll look at the ways you can represent instances of a class using UML. And this shows the notation. Both classes and objects use the classifier box as their symbol. You'll notice that the class name in a class is capitalized and boldfaced. For an object, the object name is lowercase and underlined. So if you're just looking at classifier boxes, these little rectangles, and you're not sure whether you're looking at an object or a class, look for the underline. That will show you that you're working with objects. So as you'll recall, classes have attributes and operations. For an example, let's have a class called Opera. And all of the objects in the Opera class will have these attributes, a name, a composer, a language, and the date of the first performance. So every object within the Opera class will have these attributes, but instead of it being just a string or an integer, we'll get the actual value. And we'll take a look at that in just a minute. Now this is one way to show an object or an instance, just put the name of the object. So if an instance in our Opera class might be Carmen. So you can identify an object just by the name of the object. You can also, if you want, identify an object by including the class name, like so. So this tells us that we have an instance called Carmen that belongs to the class of Opera. And it's also possible to have an anonymous object where you leave off the name of the individual object and just give the name of the class to which that object belongs. And again, you can tell that this classifier refers to an object and not to a class because the colon that precedes it and the underlining of the class name. So this is an anonymous object that belongs to the Opera class. Now as I said, the attributes of the Opera class will have individual values for the objects that belong to that class. And the modeling tool I'm using here, Visual Paradigm, doesn't let you show attribute values within an instance or an object classifier box. So I made some examples in another program and I'm going to just paste them in here. You can see here an example of a particular object belonging to the Opera class. This, is, this object is Carmen and you notice how each of the values for these attributes is filled in now. We have the name for the Opera, the name of the composer, the language, and the year of its first performance. Similarly, over here, you can show operations that belong to an instance of a class. For example, if we had an Opera interface that implemented this method right here, get Opera name, you could show that in an object diagram by showing a classifier that has the anonymous instance and the method that it implements.